Okay, let's try this again. It's my iPad here. Okay, so just figuring out where you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm just going to start with reverse of disassembly. I'm going to start by putting the pilot jet back in. That's all cleaned out now. One thing that I noticed about this carb that I was kind of impressed with is that the it came apart really easy for the amount of corrosion in this thing. It was surprising. So I'm going to want to put that little bit of oil on that O-ring and push this your main valve, your, your fuel uh, needle valve in there. Make sure that seat's pushed in there. That was a little rubber o-ring that goes on there, so that's going in a lot better than how it came out. This plate is a keeper that holds it back in. And this little screw right here just goes in there. That wasn't in my other video. How to take that apart. Whoops, I guess you can't see much if I'm not holding it in front of the camera. Main jet. This is painful. <clears throat> With the not being able to use a, a camera, I'm working on that. Getting that ready. So you can tighten that. I, I don't like to do that. We should use a wrench because that jet can come out of there. So I don't want to tighten it too much in case that has to be changed at some point. Okay, two times. Okay, so basically your, your assembly of the carb is going to be reverse of disassembly. So like I said, most of the parts just go back in. There's only one place a lot of them will fit. A lot of these needle jets, the choke, things like that. So just go ahead and, and put the things, things back in where they came out. So your needle... Float, and then... Of course that hinge pin goes back in. I'm not going to be able to film all of this. I don't think we're going to have to stop and start a few times to merge the videos together. There we go. Now, so, and that'll just have to be tapped back in. And then if you think that might move on you, you can just go ahead and stake it a little bit. Like just take a punch and kind of stake that pin so it doesn't move anymore. So it's nice to have the floats back in. So I'm just gonna, I think it's it's fairly self-explanatory how a lot of this stuff goes back together. There was a, a ru little rubber O-ring there that came out of where the, I believe that's where it came out of, yeah. Where our idle screw goes in. Just gotta put that back in there carefully. Is the idle screw stop and just got this tiny little washer that goes on the end of it here. You can see that. So and then we can just so put that o ring on. Oh dang. So I'm going to have to put that o ring on the end of this, I think, because it doesn't want to line up otherwise. That's going to just seal that in there. That came out when I was using my my brush to clean it. Like that, give it a squirt of lube. And it should be good to go. Come on. Got to be careful with penetrating oil because some of it might make that those O-rings just swell ever so slightly. And then make real bear to try and get started in there. So I'm not sure if that's what's going on here. Or not, but once it gets started I think we'll be good. Yeah, there we go. And you can see inside. Now when I turn that in, that's just gonna hold the the throttle up. The more you turn that in it just lets a little more air in and that'll adjust your idle. I think it was about five turns in or something, which is Surprising. Choke. 
choke in. Oh, you know what? Choke's a bit of a process to put in there. It's got this little plate that goes on the housing before. And there's a few parts here that have to be put, kind of put together. So it might be easier to put this fork in like that and then put this in all in one piece like this. Let's give it a try. There, it just came out. All right, I'm just gonna pause before I'll do Okay, this. I'm back now. So what you're gonna wanna do is just make sure you have your right order in your choke. Your choke uh, linkage there. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure that I'm getting a good shot here with the iPad. So there's gonna be a sealing washer, the aluminum sealing washer underneath there. There's the spring that goes on your threaded part that goes on the sleeve and then your spring that holds the choke up and then there's another kind of a lock washer that goes in there and you'll see there's a square piece that it lines up with in your threaded sleeve and then it, it kind of locks it right there it's bent up so the choke's working good now that's still a little stiff but but it comes on like it should so there we go you just gotta get it just right so it's still, it's still a little bit sticky but it's better than it was when i took it apart i had to pull that out with pliers Anyways, that's, you just want to make sure that you've got the right order on there. And it's a little bit of a pain because you got to put the spring in there and kind of compress it to get it threaded. But just be careful and, and it'll go in there. Uh, one of the things I forgot too was there's actually a spring on this screw here, this idle air control adjustment that I forgot to put on in the previous video. So make sure you put that spring in. Got another jet here. Here we are. Our low speed. I think, <laughs> but I have to look, I can't remember. So there's a spring on that one. And just thread it in. You don't want to go super tight with these. I'm surprised at how bad they can get corroded in there. A little bit of moisture gets in there. Like I say, this one came apart really easy. So once you get it up together, just just check your, sorry about that, I just want to get here. Just check and make sure that your needles, your main needle valve is moving there. It's not hanging up at all. And it looks real good. You can check float height. I have no idea what it is for this and I didn't bend. You just bend your bracket for your float. So if you have to adjust float height, if you think it's too high or too low. I didn't change anything on this car, but I was running. So I'm pretty sure the problem was that it was just dirty. And then you've got your bowl that you can put on. When you get it done, so there is a tube in there that you've got to get lined up. A couple of tubes. So you don't want to force it, just make sure that you're... Come on. Tubes get lined up and it clamps, clips back in like that. So the rest of the assembly is pretty straightforward. So like I said, what I'm going to do is put this back together. I'm probably going to take the petcock out of the bike when I get back to the house, take it out, drain the gas out and I'm going to clean up the screen and the petcock and clean the petcock up because it's pretty stiff to oil it up. You wouldn't believe how well that works. Just some penetrating oil in there and clean it. Make sure it's not clogged up. I got a new filter and fuel lines and I'm sure this thing's going to run like a top. So I'll get a video of that when I get up to the house.